have been enjoying this lens lately, the Pentacon 135mm f2.8. On a 35mm body or on a full frame digital camera, it classes as a so called medium telephoto. On an APS-C sensor, on the other hand, it's simply telephoto at 202.5mm or so. Made in what was then the German Democratic Republic, aka East Germany, this is the Zebra edition. So called for obvious reasons. As already mentioned, it's a 135mm focal length lens with five elements in four groups. The maximum aperture is a fast f2.8 and it has 15 aperture blades. The aperture range is from 2.8 to 32. That's f2.8 to f32 in the usual steps, you know, f4, f5.6 and so on. But there are dots between f2.8 and f4, f4 and f5.6 and f5.6 and f8. I suppose those are four intermediary stops. If you're interested in using filters with this lens, the filter size is 55 millimeters. It also comes with a very handy metallic lens hood, which is really, really useful indeed. The foremost ring is the aperture ring, which has the zebra stripes and is very, very smooth with no clicks at the aperture numbers. So you have to look at the aperture ring when you're changing the settings. There are two dots on the aperture ring. The upper one denotes the minimum aperture setting. The lower one denotes the current aperture setting. To change the minimum aperture setting, lift the aperture ring slightly and move the dot to the required aperture. Henceforth, you'd only be able to set the aperture from f2.8 to that selected aperture. Alternatively, you can select the required aperture by lifting the ring and setting it to the desired aperture and then using the aperture ring to focus at f2.8 before returning to the desired aperture to take the shot. The second zebra ring is the focusing ring. There is a distance scale on the lens which shows a range between 1.5 meters to infinity. Conveniently enough, this is an M42 mount lens which means I can use it with my film bodies such as the Zenit E or Zenit 12 XP. It also means I already have the adapters for my Canon and Sony digital cameras. So let's start with the negatives. The first obvious one is the weight. It weighs about 520 grams, which is actually not that heavy, but I've grown accustomed to much lighter lenses. It also protrudes quite a bit, especially on a mirrorless camera such as the A6000 and also after adding an adapter and the lens hood, it just really sticks out. It also has a really long focus throw, like really long. While this is an advantage in other circumstances, it really makes the lens non-viable for fast changing scenarios like sports or wildlife. Well, wildlife, eh, it's manageable. I guess you can set it to near infinity and hope for the best. Where the long focus throw comes in handy is when trying to focus intricately at f2.8 at something very small. That usually helps because the longer the focus throw, usually the more accurate the focusing is. The positives. Well, this lens is sharp. It's very sharp without being gritty, if you know what I mean. And so far, I've got really good isolation between my subject and the background. This is also thanks to the wonderful bokeh of this lens, which is very, very clean and very, very pleasing to me. On a film body, I'd say it's a fantastic portrait lens with good compression that creates very pleasing features for your subjects. On a cropped sensor, it still makes a good portrait lens, but at about 200 millimeters, it's getting a little bit long. Maybe for headshots only or heads and shoulders, something like that. Otherwise, you'd either need to be outdoors or somewhere where you can stand far away enough from your model to get them in the frame. Talking about outdoors, I believe it's full moon tomorrow, on Monday that is. Not just full moon, but super moon. And that 200 millimeter odd focal length may just come in handy. Until next time. Okay, <laughs> bye.